we should probably talk right now to the one involved in this one, and that's Todd Bodine. He's with Ray Dunlap. Well, he's going to take a look at the damage here on his race truck, and uh, actually he's already done that and walking away. He wants to get over here and sit down in the shade, I think. See if I can get over here. Todd, it appeared, it appeared that maybe you didn't get quite going as fast as you'd like to on the restart. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, it's hard to get going when you have Chevrolets on each end of you and you're lacking 20 horsepower from what they got. That's right where it shows up on restarts. And I tried to tried to jump it a little bit. I held back from Ron and jumped it. The Matt got a good restart. You know, I blocked him, no doubt about it. But how stupid do you have to be to turn somebody going in the corner with eight laps to go? I mean, that, there's no cure for stupid. This kid has done this crap his whole career. He's done it the Hornet Day this year. He just did it to me. Hell, he wasn't even up far enough to turn me. And, uh, no, I can, I, I can tell you, man, what goes around comes around, and that kid's going to get turned. I'm telling you straight out. I mean, that's that's absolutely ridiculous right there. And you see the, the final take here, Todd, as we're showing the replay there, and a pretty hard hit once you did get settled back up across the track. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I hate it for Colin. Rick, I mean, uh, Colin had a good truck. You know, he just got back a little on the pit stops. But, uh, you know, there's just there's just no cure for stupid. And the kid's been that way his whole career, and he's not, he's going to continue. I mean, the kid's second in the points. What if, what if he didn't clear me and turn me and he turned himself in the wall? Then he could be fourth in points. The kid doesn't think. Thank you for your time. That is Todd Bodine. And I'm telling you guys, this Ventrilo Toyota Tundra is absolutely destroyed. I'll tell you, let's see if we can talk to Matt Crafton and then the 88 truck. Hey, Matt Crafton, Phil Parsons up in the speed booth. you have a copy? Yes, sir. I got you loud and clear. Hey, Matt, you just uh, on the red flag now after that unfortunate incident down there with the 30 truck. Tell us what happened from your perspective. Well, I just got a really good restart on the deal, and I got under him, got to his left rear quarter panel, and he ran me down, and I moved down with him, down with him. And it's inside a 10 to go. I and mean, if it was any other time, I, mean, I would have lifted. But, I mean, I, the last thing I want to do is wreck somebody. I, I hate that, really do for him. But, I mean, these guys work too hard to just let off and let somebody go. Okay, you got that 33 truck right in front of you now. Obviously, that's the guy you're battling for this championship. You had some issues with him a little bit earlier in this race, Matt. Are you exactly where you want to be now inside of 10 laps to go? I'll tell you one thing, I ain't scared. I ain't scared at all. I'm ready. All right, have a good one, buddy. Good luck. I love it. I ain't scared. That's Matt Kraft, and he's running second. He's second in the points right behind Ron Hornaday. Stay with us right here, right as soon as this one is done. You can go over to race day built by the Home Depot. And, and let me tell you, we may be a long way from being done here. <laughs> the only we, good thing is we can only do one green and white check. That's right. We, that's right. We have six laps to go when they come back around. It'll be five to go. It looks like the lights are still on the pace truck, so they might send them around one more time with just four to go before we get the green flag. Ron Hornaday, always spectacular at restarts, but Matt Crafton making a comment, I ain't scared. I think a part where he's saying he's not scared, if Ron doesn't get as good of a restart as what he had liked and his is good, he's. I think what he's saying is, is that even as an opportunity to get alongside of him, he is going to go alongside of him. And it would be one thing if that 88 truck has, has been shown to be stronger than the 33 all day then then you would think he would have a good chance to either get to his bumper or get beside him but that 33 truck has had so much strength i don't think if matt doesn't get close to him on the restart i'm not sure he's going to be able to catch him johnny well he's not going to be able to catch him but the one thing is is neither one of them have been that great under the restarts for the first couple of two three laps and we have seen the 88 get right on the back bumper of that 33 on restart so we'll see if that happens next but first let's go down to colin brownies with ray dunlap well, Colin, certainly a roller coaster day today. Is that a great way to summarize it? Yeah, you know, I guess it is. It's definitely a disappointing day for this number six Conway Freight Ford F-150 team. Uh, really feel bad we tore that truck up. I mean, that was a good truck for us. And, uh, you know, I just made a mistake inside Kraft in there uh, way before that. Got loose, I guess, and uh, spun around. And that's what put us back there with all those guys. And, um, you know, I don't know what happened on that restart. Uh, from where I was sitting, they were three wide in front of me, and I couldn't see anything. And the next thing I know, the 30 is just uh, coming across the racetrack in a hurry, and that was that. Kind of the way to summarize this season for these guys. They have a couple of great weeks and then a down week. That's the way it's been for the six team. Yeah, difficult finish to the day after the run he's had on the latter half of this season. That's Colin Brown heading back into his hauler. Now 
We will have four laps of racing to go around this mile and a quarter. Ron Hornaday in front of Matt Crafton, one and two in the points, and Crafton, well, he ain't scared. Hey, we got Mike Skinner with a little bit fresher tires on those front two trucks, too. He may be a factor. Yeah, and he's third in the points. Yeah, I mean, to five, <laughs> just got by to 13 there, and, he's, and I'm sure he's sinking, but, boy, these guys already had some issues. Just a little bit. Give me that chance. Let Give them get me. together going in the corner, and I'll just drive by on the inside, well, maybe. And if we, we've seen people struggle coming off turn two, and if that happens, Sometimes that guy in third place has got a pretty good shot at getting by him before they get to turn three. Just give me an opening. How about Johnny Sauter back there in fourth? Brian Scott in fifth. It's all going to shake out now. Four laps of racing to go. The fans are back up on their feet. The green flag will go in the air. We're back underway. Four to go from Gateway. Crafton's all over him. He's got a run, a little bit of a run. He moves to the inside. There's oh, the contact. Contact again. Crafton gets into the back of the 33, and Hornaday spins around. Oh, and big contact behind him. That's the 07 that gets into the 33. Jason Young driving that 07. What a difficult situation this has got to be for the 33 team. Ron, Ron Hornaday sitting in his truck. Rick Wren on top of the pit box. I'm sure worried about his driver right now. Look at back into that truck. Gone. Back end is gone, gone. He's going to have to definitely park that in. The thing is, oh, that ain't good. Those guys can be mad. He had a run on him, and obviously we're going to see a couple views of this. If a guy's got a run coming like that, you got to give him a little bit of room because this could happen. It's almost a carbon copy of what we yeah. saw with Matt Crafton and Todd Bodine. Now, what does this mean? Ron Hornaday will not finish this race. More than likely... He will finish in the 16th to 17th position. David Starr has scored three laps down. We will only have three laps to go. He'll, well, David Starr will complete lap 157. Let's take a look back at what ha happened. You see Ron is extremely upset. Matt Crafton got a good run. He moved to the inside. They got down to the corner. I, I tell you, that, that really looked a lot different on replay from yes, what the other situation was with Todd and Matt Crafton. It was. This was a different situation. They were we'll really all the way to the corner. Here's a, here's a better view. I meant Ron's trying to block him. There's no doubt. But the 88, he's not quite there. But he went as low as he could. Yeah, Ron know. was almost down to the curbing on the inside of the racetrack. So it was a lot later. You see Jason Young come along with nowhere to go. And then Mikey Kyle makes contact yeah. with the 07. But uh, really unfortunate. Here's another view right here. Watch. They're already down to the corner there. Matt just had his nose up beside the left rear quarter panel, not even to the rear tires. So yeah. it had a lot different look than what Todd and Matt Steele looked yes, like. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. I mean, he, he's got to run. I don't know if this was going to be a passable deal. That's not a – that view right there, Steve, is not a passable deal. But from listening to that 88 truck, I don't think that was intentional. I, I think, think he got him in the corner maybe a little bit hot, but I swear I don't think that was a deal where I'm going to go take him out when we get down to the corner. No, I, I mean, you could hear him get off the gas. It was probably not a very good judgment deal. But it's late in the deal. He's got to make yeah, something he mentioned, happen. He has to, yeah, inside has five to try to do that. And it just, you know, maybe he thought, you know what, I'm there. Please give me a little bit of room. And then he didn't get that room he was hoping for. And you get in that corner so hard, you use all the break you have getting down to that corner. It could have been a misjudged situation. Obviously, Ron pulled down to try to block him. Matt had a good run on him. And they got to the corner, and they got in trouble at him.